YouTube friends, my name's Jackie. Welcome to Gone Potty Gardening. What a glorious day we've got today. It's ideal to get outside in the middle of September and clean that garden up. I'm in the big polytunnel, the polycarbonate one today, and what I want to do is clear up all the tomatoes that are dying. Actually, and some of them have now got blight, but we've done so well with them. You know, we've had so many tomatoes. We've frozen loads of romas. Um, ready for you know meals and uh, yeah couldn't be more pleased with that but now some of the plants have got blight so what I want to do is um, get rid of them and um, yeah we've still got some green fruits on the plants I'll show you so there's still some um, green uh, tomatoes there but I mean I think I ought to just take them all off now because um, a lot of the plants are like there look on that leaf I'm getting a bit of uh, blight on them so yeah we can easily make some chutney with those the peppers are doing fantastic look still and we've been freezing them as well but you can see all the tomato plants at the back look coming to the end of their day and, and you know we've done really well really to get to this time of year to get blight I've already started over in this corner clearing up all the plants and those few um, tomatoes on there I've kept for the um, chickens. Yeah, because they're not really any good. That plant got stuff on, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's a few more green tomatoes there. But I think it's worth that you could see the blight on the stems of some of them. Especially there, look. But yeah, I mean, we can make some uh, chutneys and stuff with the green tomatoes. This little plant down here was a, a cherry uh, one and it was so prolific. Definitely going to grow that next year. Um, it begins with M, that one. I'll put it in the video what they're called, but yeah, marvellous they were. Some of uh, Helen's really, really hot peppers up there. I doubt if we'll ever eat them, but we wanted to grow them to see what they were like. But yeah, there's a few plants with them on. There's another one over here with some fruits on. We've also strung up the onions. I ended up with five bunches. Um, there's another one there and another one there. And these ones that are up here in the rack are ones that I grew from seed that I... I've just drying up. They're, they're not greatly big, but at least I know, you know, I can grow and just probably start them off a little bit earlier, really. But yeah, what a great harvest. There's something to be said, isn't there, about growing your own. It's just the flavour, and it's not just a saying. People say, oh, you know, it tastes better. It actually really does. There's much more flavour, much more um, satisfaction in knowing that you grew it yourself and the nutrition that you're going to get from it really so yeah it's definitely worth doing a garden if you haven't you haven't got a garden it's definitely start start doing a little garden even if it's just a few pots definitely worth it so basically i think that i need to harvest all the tomatoes even the green ones and we can sort them out when we get indoors and see what we're going to do with them but i would say probably helen and make a chutney or something and um yeah, then over the winter I'm going to get it cleaned out, a um, bit of Jay's fluid and sort it all out. I don't know what happened to that sunshine. It's absolutely pouring now. But it's nice when you're in here, when you can hear all the outside. There's a bit of a chill in the air though. A few um, Roma red ones that I've found so I'm just gonna well I'm gonna put them all actually in a little tub so I've got myself a little um, flower pot and I'm just picking any green get out of it he's partial to tomatoes um, picking out any you know ones that I can rescue that have not got blight I'll even take these little ones in look there's quite a few of them they say you can put them next to a ripe banana and it ripens them but We'll see, I'm not sure yet. But the blight actually does 
distort some of them and they'll be well, there's quite a few over the back here oh, yeah get that stem off Oops. here we are I've never made um, a chutney actually, but I'm sure there's plenty of recipes about for different things like that. You can see that blight on the stem there. There's a little one down here somewhere. This doesn't look like as much on this one. There's a few actually down here, look. Well, a few, a couple. And you can sometimes tell by the colour of them that the tomatoes are no good. Look, that one's got like a, an orangey, tingy, funny colour. So no, that won't taste very nice. So I'll be giving that to the chickens because they don't worry about it. It takes quite a while to clear all this lot. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm cutting them to the base of the stalk, you know, the growing stem. And then I'll have to empty the buckets and I'll probably clean them all with a bit of Joe's fluid. But yeah, it's going to take me a while. So I'm getting there, look. Getting quite a few empty ones. And, uh, yeah, soon get there. Got quite a few green ones, look. I've just saved from the blight, really. I've got some more up this end, look. <clears throat> and then get rid of this big pile. So it's took me a little while to get it all cleared out. Um, fill the wheelbarrow with all the empty dirt and that weighs a ton um, you know the root ball with all the tomatoes and stuff but anyway it's all nice and tidy now so I'll quickly show you there you are yeah all that's left now are all the um, pepper plants there's actually one up there that's starting to go red yeah so it looks all right now all nice and clear um, I've put these two tubs up here. As you can see, the ground is really uneven, so I'm going to have to sort that out. But um, these have got lids, so we'll be able to put um, lettuces and that in there over the winter. And, um, yeah, that would be good to grow a few bits like that. I'm not going mad over the winter growing outside or anything this year, um, but I'm going to plan well for next year. Um, down this middle, like I said, I've got to put another strip of this weed suppressant. And uh, yeah, it'll look good. Like I said before, I've still got a few onions up there look, hanging to string them for you. They're the ones that I grew from seed, so yeah, they won't take long. There's not many of them. We actually thought about having some shelving in the um, polytunnel, you know, but some of it's quite expensive, isn't it? The proper greenhouse um, shelving. So um, yeah, we found some on IKEA, and our friend was lovely enough to let us order it in with her order. And um, yeah, they came, so they're quite handy. These ones are just the short ones with three shelves, but got, um, we've got four of those. Um, put two there and two over the other side. Um, and also when I was at the shop, I picked up a couple of these. I thought they'd be quite good for um, harvesting. You know, like I've, got, I've still got green beans to go and get and I shall collect some of them in a minute in there. And the other one is I thought it would be good to put the potatoes that I've harvested, uh, harvested in. Yeah, there's some shallots there, look. I want to um, pick up 
peel them, but I can sit in the polytunnel and do them. Um, put them in jars. Yeah. I've also got my um, seed box that I want to go through that and, um, you know, re-file my seedlings in there. Seeds, I mean. And um, see what there is and plan out growing for next year. Can't believe a year's gone already. Actually, quite a few weeks ago now, I come across this really horrible thing in the garden. I'll pop a picture in and see, see if any of you have ever come across anything like it. It was horrible. Anyway, I, I asked for a bit of advice and I got a picture that looks similar. So hopefully it is what I think it, well, what they think it is. So yeah, I'll pop the picture in now and see what you think. We've also had more little chicks born. Um, they're in the other polytunnel in uh, um, Bruder. So yeah, I'll pop you a little bit of a video in there. They're growing nicely, getting all their little feathers. So, um, and the little hen outside, um, in with the big hens, is um, sitting on six eggs as well. So probably more little chicks coming. When I, now that I've finished this polytunnel, it'll be the seeds I want to sort out. But also, um, now's a good time, isn't it, to go out and sort your rhubarb out. Um, people are still getting, uh, well, they'll be getting autumn raspberries um, about now. And probably pears and things like that still. Um, and then it'll be, for me, it'll be just um, going around the garden, tidying up, picking up old pots. They're, they're the perfect place for slugs to go under. So I want to, yeah, give the garden a good tidy and cover some beds. Um, like I say, I've got to harvest some uh, runner beans. Um, what else? Oh, kale. Still got kale to get. As you can see, I've still got a lot of um, tidying to do. I'm going to put the um, strimmer right through the middle there. And I'm going to let the pathways go to grass and just keep it down. Um, I found with the wood chip, like I say, all the um, weeds would get rooted in there and it's just a waste of time. So, yeah, I've got a little battery operated uh, strimmer, which I use for the smaller spaces. And, uh, yeah, I've also got some corn over there to get. And, uh, yeah. And I've been tidying out in this polytunnel. So lots of pottering around jobs really. Also in the winter this year, I want to sort out some of these fruit trees, um, prune them a bit and give them a good feed. And this tree here, I want to put something around that, um, you know, so that it's got a bit of a border and the grass doesn't overtake it all the time. But yeah, so there's lots of bits and pieces to do. I bought a few plants actually at the garden centre. I mean, we're coming to the end of the season now, but this is um, a lovely perennial um, fuchsia. I would like to take a couple of cuttings from that actually to get some more trees, bushes, I mean. Um, <clears throat> this is a uh, clematis. It's the pink type that glows quite quick. Well, I bought this to try and cover up this tank. Um, put a trellis, you know, and grow some of it over the trellis. So that was the reason for buying that. And these are quite sweet. They're very tiny. Little bells on them. Like a fuchsia, you know. And I bought two of those. And those I hope to put around the edge of this matting. The sun has come out this afternoon again after some showers, so it's lovely um, to be out now. 
And it won't be long, will it, till the nights are shortening and we won't be able to get out in the garden as much. Um, I'm hoping to, though, uh, not necessarily in the garden, but make use of the polytunnels in the winter because um, hopefully the polycarbonate one will still be, you know, hold a bit of heat in there and I can sit in there and plan next year's garden in there, which will be lovely. Like I say, I want to take a few cuttings. I want to collect a few seeds from around the garden, some poppy seeds and a few other bits. Um, I'm going to leave some of the beans on there for uh, to dry out for next year. This time of the year also is a good year to be thinking about planting your bare root trees. So uh, if you're thinking of that, yeah, it's a good, good time to look around for those. Um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the day pottering around, collecting seeds and, you know, um, getting rid of empty pots that have got earth in and moving pots and never ending but lovely like i say over the winter i'd like to do a few projects in the garden um use the natural source sources that are already here you know branches and things like that um so yeah i'm quite excited to do that and that is another reason i'm grateful to have the polytunnel um the green one i'm i'm kind of using for projects like that and for the chicks and stuff like that not really for growing as much now because it's quite in the shade under them trees but it's a great area for me to be creative you know I'd like to build another arch out of um, the long sticks and uh, lots of things I'd like to make I love creating things that you know are just from from the garden from nature from old branches that have fallen and you know, it's surprising what you can make, really. Um, I've got to make the chickens a nesting box, so that's another project. There's a fly. Um, yeah, it's a bit of weeding. I want to move, um, like I said, um, uh, the comfrey. I want to move the comfrey out of that bed. That'll free up a bed, and I'll, I'll put that somewhere else. I'm going to cut it down now, um, put the leaves into the compost. That's great for making compost. Well, adding to your compost. It's rich in nutrients and nitrogen. So yeah, uh, lots of uh, things. There's, we've got quite a few pears on the tree this year. That's the first year we've had decent pears. So we'll be harvesting them. They'll probably be a bit hard, but hopefully be able to ripen them a bit indoors. Yeah, so there's uh, lots of pottering around to do. Um, when the builders were here, they um, put the uh, fountain over there in the grass. So I've got to sort that out and put that together. I enjoy that. I love to, to hear the sound of water outside when you're just sitting here, you know. I've put all the brollies away now. You never know. We'll probably get a load of uh, bad weather now and the brollies might have taken off if I hadn't took them down. But anyway, I hope you're all well and enjoying the last bit of the garden while we can. And uh, in the next video, I'll be, I've got quite a few bags of potatoes that I want to harvest. So we'll do that together in the next video. Anyway, for now, look after yourselves and love to you all. Take care. Bye. <music>